Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mozville USA, back with another video and today we've got something very interesting. I have no idea if it's going to work. Um, a bit of an experiment. And you know, if it doesn't work, I'm not sure if you're gonna be seeing this. This might stay on the cutting room floor, who knows. Um, but yeah, we're going to try something cool. So we've got a lot of pieces here. The DMS-4, shout outs to the homie Sanad over on, uh, over on Twitter, traded these to me quite a while ago, and we're going to be installing this for the Toxic OS into a V12, the very first revision of the slim PS2s, more on that in a moment, we've got in, uh, M2 SATA one terabyte a docking station so we can hook it up to my uh, PC and transfer files we've got an IDE to SATA adapter here and the reason for this is a 44 pin so this guy um, going in the PS2 because the V12 V13 uh, 70,000 70,000 one um, 70, I believe some in the US whatever doesn't matter uh, the V12s V13s early slims um, you can rebuild the IDE port and have an internal hard drive. You likely saw Macho Nacho's recent video um, using one of these bad boys from the homie Gus Goose Geese. Don't know how to say pronounce your name dude I'm sorry but he does amazing work. Um, really really nice um, videos installing PS2 mod chips there's a lot of the IDE stuff um, very cool shit I will leave a link to this flex and this is designed primarily uh, for the IDE to um, SD card boards but the thing with those is they only support up to 128 gigabytes which is how those boards are unfortunately um, it's not ideal. I would like to be able to uh, do better than that. So therefore we're going to give the internal SATA um, SSD a try. Won't improve speeds. But I'm hopefully hoping that it improves the size. It should be compact enough to be able to cram it on the bottom. Um, seems like it will be short enough we should be able to get it in there somewhere somehow um, yeah and the only downside compared to the SD card see SD cards in the front of the console um, boom push it comes out put in your computer edit the files etc um, this one you'll need to pop the top shell off uh, remove the one screw locking it in by the controller port pull up the board get under there switch it out but if we just go ahead and set it up how we want it beforehand we're not going to need to get in there anyway so that's the idea um, it's not going to be easier to get in there and swap this but it's large enough to where we shouldn't need to ever have to swap it once it's set up that's the idea here so I'm going to give this a try and I guess the first thing to do is do a little rocky montage installing the DMS4 Pro um, but we're going to need to play around a little bit to see how things are going to line up before we get to any of that though let's have a word from today's sponsor a huge thank you to today's sponsor PCBWay not only do they offer PCB manufacturing but they now offer CNC and 3D printing services as well. 
I've gotten PCBs for many of my products and projects manufactured by PCBWay before. The website is super easy to use and the quality and turnaround time is amazing. Very swag, very handsome. I like it. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, so we've got like, uh, looks like medical tape here. It's gotta go. Okay. Then we're gonna get some helping hands. Hit this with some heat. And get these pin headers off of here. We need the space. Okay, so what I'm gonna do I'm adding a bit of low melt here just to hopefully speed things along. As you can see, that came out of there before it even melted. Yeah, low melt really is magical. It's typically... Um, this would have all been melted, but... We've preserved it. Um, I'm just fluxing this up as I would prefer. We get all that low melt out of here. You don't want to mix that in with our uh, regular solder. A little bit. Shouldn't be too big of a deal, but I want to get up as much as we can. with some IPA. Okay, so after a bit of fiddling around here, um, notice something. So, Typically pin one should be a square, but as you can see, 
It is not. They're all circles. But this guy is still intact. So I looked up the pinout. And there's the one one empty pin and that is um, I believe pin 20 so we got 1, 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20 so that means pin 1 is here that is pin 1 so if we look at the uh, flex cable Come in here to where it lines up. Um, pin one is over here, so that means Huh. How would this work? So it would have to be like this. Or like this. And that's not gonna work, so unfortunately I'm going to have to wire this up manually. C'est la vie. Okay, there's been some uh, developments here. Um, yeah, the ribbon's not going to work. This guy is not going to fit underneath the board here because the capacitors, the voltage regulator, it's all a bit too tall. Um, now, maybe some modifications can be done to a board like this using a smaller V-Reg, smaller capacitors, bring the board down in its height a bit, or potentially a custom PCB using smaller components. I don't know, that's outside of the scope for this video, but I do have another idea. So I've already gone ahead and mounted this here. And you'll notice without the uh, the disk drive here, this guy fits in place pretty perfectly. Now granted, you'll still, I'll still need to pull the top off. You'll be able to see all this, but still need to be uh, pulling the top off to uh, pull the SATA drive. But for this build, it's a uh, am I had to think it over. Am I willing to sacrifice the disk drive to potentially run a terabyte, two terabyte uh, M2 SATA? And I came to the conclusion that yes, I want to give this a try. I want to see if this will work. I'm sure it can be improved. Um, if it does work, but for the sake of testing and for, you know, for it to not be like an abomination, I think this will be perfectly fine. This fits in here very, very nicely. So it's just going to be a lot of wiring really it's the only thing and it does look like it's like perfect like the size like the hole spacing and whatnot seems pretty damn pretty damn perfect it's just this lip here prevents it um, so it could either be you know cut this out or some sort of 3d printed adapter that screws in here and then this screws into that all of that can be figured out later if this does indeed work but I'm sure something very slick can be 
made for this replacing um, replacing the disk drive with this board here so I'm gonna go ahead start by wiring up the DMS4 Pro and testing it and since the disk drive um, isn't going to be populated this will uh, make our life quite a bit easier because all we need is power, ground, BIOS, essentially everything wired up here already from when I was testing. Um, yeah, it's just going to be these wires here. So I just got to connect them to the uh, DMS4 Pro, make it look nice. So let's do that. And this is totally unnecessary. I just really, um, I like Toxic OS. I want to um, build like this. It's a white PS2 Slim. I've got a couple of these. Um, and especially with the internal hard drive, just boot it up and there's the games thanks to Toxic OS. So I like that. That's what I'm going to do.
Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, DMS4 is booting up in the Toxic OS. Very nice, very neat. Uh, so now comes the pain in the ass part. We gotta wire up this NVMe IDE adapter. So uh, buckle up. All right, here I am on a German website, circuitboard.de. And this is a very nice resource if you want to wire up an IDE drive in your PS2. Very shitty install uh, by the op of this thread, but very useful information here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're going to be doing something similar mounting the NVMe drive um, in place of the disk drive here, but really all we need is these pinouts. So I'm going to wire it up. I want to make this nice and sexy uh, as to the best of our abilities. And um, yeah, try not to lose track of these wires. That's going to be the real hard part is counting. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so kind of have a plan here with how to do this. Um, I am going to use one green wire for whatever's going to be my cornermost uh, point. So, judging from uh, here number one from the diagram that's going to be one of the edges there so I'll we'll come in give it a little boop Okay, <clears throat> so that's going to be an edge, so I can keep track of it once everything is um, routed and tacked in, you know, the sexy cable management stuff. Um, I'll take a picture to see how it all goes, but as it folds around the board, I'll be able to keep track of which side is which uh, without having to think about it as one side is going to have a different color wire. The rest I'm going to do in blue.
gentlemen, we've got these wires routed. Um, now this will get the job done. I don't know if this is optimal. I guess we'll find out once we wire up the NVMe adapter here. Uh, but we've got the bottom side here, top side here. And the idea was have them go in separate ways just to, um, you know, it's already a lot of wires to keep track of. So one will be coming from the top, one will be coming from the bottom of the IDE port. Now, you, if you're uh, the keen viewers, you might realize that there is a bit of an error here. I'm bunching up all of the wires. This one is coming way down to number two. So this is something that I'm going to need to keep track of. Um, it's not just going to be left, right, um, keeping track of all of these, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need to reference my image of the of what I installed versus the pinout. Whole lot of counting. Um, yeah, this is this is going to suck. Uh, <laughs> like, where this is the easy part. The um, um, the hard part really is wiring it to the IDE port because it's just a lot of. You know, two, four, six, eight, ten. You know, not everything's numbered, and it's you know, forty-four pins. So, a lot of uh, a lot of counting. It's going to be a real Sesame Street affair wiring this up. But overall, I think this looks quite nice. Um, and we're not going to see it once it's installed, but <laughs> uh, it does help to have the cables nicely managed like this, for sure. So, um, last thing uh, on the docket here is wire it up and hope that it works. Uh, so let's get to that. Okay, so this is the top side of the board, the IDE pins for the SATA adapter here, or the M2 SATA adapter. Um, so let me, um, I'm, I'm gonna do majority of this off screen here just because it's so so tedious but I want to just kind of explain um, my thought process here um, so I've already connected this one it's 23 and the next one in the chain here is 18 you really gotta that's where photos of the install come in um, especially to for these ones as they're under the shielding and I won't be able to just check them when I want. And also a little note here, I use my flush cuts to straighten uh, these ones out just so they don't get crushed. Um, just a little a side trip worth taking there. So the next one here is 18. I had marked pin one with this silver Sharpie here we got pin one, pin two. Next one is 18. Um, also here two is, so pin one, so this will be 43 and 44. So 18, so that's even. So two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, one more time. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Okay. And that
Okay. Wrap this out of the way of the pin underneath it. And one more time. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. No, this is not not very uh, compelling film doing this um, a zillion times, but that's the idea. Uh, just a lot of counting and double checking, because uh, yeah, if you do one, if you're off by one, um, it's a nightmare. That happened. The only other time I did this that did happen at one point where I'm going to connect a wire and there's already a wire connected to it. And then you're like, shit, then you undo that one. It's like, where was this supposed to go? And then a whole bunch of them are wrong because eventually I had started like, okay, that this one's 18, so it's uh, 20 goes next to that one. So you start counting off of the ones you've already connected. And yeah, it was a massive headache. Um, just you get one wrong it can be a chain reaction to get a bunch wrong and then figuring out what's wrong and and what's not is a mess so uh there you go um that's how you do it and i'll show you what it looks like when this is all done in about a hundred days ladies and gentlemen it is all wired up that's an absolute pain in the ass to do but it is done. So we've got the uh, M2, IDE to M2 adapter here. Can uh, use some cleaning up, pull in five volts from USB here, pull in ground from right here, and then everything else we showed you wiring up or in the diagram, etc. And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the cable management got a little sloppy on the top side here. Just because there's not much room to play with. I couldn't, if I had come from like maybe here and like had it curved, I could have had it um, much nicer. But really, I mean, it's just so much work. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to get it done at this point. Uh, that seems to be the what happens here. It's just so tedious and so long uh, with wiring up a mod chip and these that by the end of it, it's really easy to just you just want to get it. You just want to get it done with. Um, it happens. Um, but yeah, let's see if I succeeded here or if I have to troubleshoot. There's a lot of. Um, I'm going to be real careful with the routing and trying to space them in between quite a bit because, you know, some have more exposed leads than I really want them to. So it took a lot of finagling trying to get them situated perfect where nothing's shorting out. Um, so, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say. Let's, uh, let's boot it up and see if it works. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after a bit of troubleshooting, um, I started counting my wires, the ones that are not connected, see if there, I accidentally populated any of those and very quickly realized I did. Uh, one wire was off by one, moved it over, booted it up, and we're getting a prompt to format our SSD, which is great. Um, Toxic OS is a bit dated. We're gonna go ahead and format it um, anyway, and then probably just go into ulaunch elf and format it over there and see what's up. So let's do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I was having issues getting it formatted in the PS2. So here I am with WinHip. I've got the drive loaded up here. 
I'll go ahead format it quick erase extended toxic OS cool Okay, so what do we got here? Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and add one game and plug it back in, see if it shows up and boots. Um, don't know what the formatting issue is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We finally got him. Now it's been about uh, 24 hours since you last heard from me, if not more. And I've walked away from this several times. Probably put another good 10 hours <laughs> into dicking around with this since you last heard from me. And finally got this working. And I never would have if it wasn't for the homie Gus. Go follow him on Twitter. Uh, buy one of his IDE flex cables and, and follow him on YouTube. Really solid dude and uh, leading the charge with a lot of these uh, V12 IDE mods. And he uh, informed me something very crucial. The these capacitors here. 100 NF on the following lines. One, two, three, four. Um, yeah, I was having all sorts of wonkiness, um, reporting the wrong size. Um, you know, when I finally did get it to report the right size, I was getting a white screen when trying to boot a game in OPL. And then there was all sorts of other wonky issues. I literally started over in a fresh console because I was just having a hell of a time getting anything working uh, on the previous one. And after a lot of troubleshooting, finally got this working perfectly. So 100 NF capacitors on these four lines. One, two, three, four. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the fully assembled, fully done M2 adapter PS2 Slim without the original disk drive. One that keeps it will be coming soon. Uh, but yeah, it's nice and simple. Open it up. There she is. If I need to get to the uh, swap it out and add more games or whatever um, I want to do. Then I need to pop it out, and I use this guy. <clears throat> $30 on Amazon. It's going to be handy to have either way, and I suspect there will be more M2 modded consoles in the future. Uh, specifically Dreamcast. This will be very handy for that. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Let's um, hook it up. Just give you a little tour. It's not like fully finished, I didn't, didn't add artwork yet, but for the most part it's loaded and ready to go. Okay, so here we are, I'm just using free make boot here, no chip installed, and we are going to OPL. Okay, so here we are, HDD Games, as you can see down at the bottom, we're rocking IDE, and let us see, let's pick a game, Haunting Grounds. And she's booting up.
And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, M2 adapter rocking from IDE. Very nice speeds so far. And most importantly, uh, very nice compatibility, as this is essentially the same as a fat PS2 uh, rocking an internal hard drive. It is better to use um, an IDE drive than, say, uh, USB or MX4 SIO. Those are, MX4 SIO is better than USB. IDE is the best, uh, fastest speeds, most compatibility. Um, it's the way to go. So I'm quite happy with this build, um, but I will be happier once I get uh, the disk drive kept. So I will be revisiting this in the future using that custom uh, PCB, maybe the flex cable that uh, was designed to keep the original disk drive intact. But for now, this is pretty damn good. Stay tuned, there will be more. We will revisit um, the V12 IDE mod very soon. Thanks for watching. Modsville USA signing out.